Size is for August 18, uh, dated 2023. Uh, for you, uh, for UPSC IAS channel, do subscribe for more updates. Here are the um, list of new news articles that we will be discussing today. You can go through it and at the end of the video you will also have prelims practice questions, discussions. So try to watch the entire uh, video and kind request to you all. You haven't subscribed the channel. Do subscribe for more updates and hit the bell icon so that you will get regular updates. About our, uh, now let us uh, get into the first news discussion. Foreign Nobel intention. The article, this article, editorial article is about the new scheme announced by our Prime Minister during his Independence Day speech. It is uh, none other than the PM Vish Vishwakarma scheme. Since the scheme was announced by our Prime Minister, we can expect a question from the scheme either on prelims or mains examination. The editorial covers the promotion of the scheme, its advantage and disadvantage. So in our discussion today, we will uh, discuss. Um, the mention points in this article in detail okay now let us start with the pm vishwakarma scheme the pm vishwakarma scheme aims to provide economic support to traditional crafts people and artisans the scheme aims to uh, provide economic support by providing them affordable credit by providing affordable credit the scheme aims to uh, improve the economic viability of the craft people and artisans okay now let us see the important provisions of the scheme the scheme offers loan up to uh, rupees 3 lakh into the two, two tranches to eligible individuals. The eligible individuals include uh, people practicing 18 trades like cobbler, toy makers, laundry man, barber, mason, choir. We will see these loans come with a um, concessional uh, interest rate of 5% in order to make sure that scheme is implemented without any constraint. The scheme has a budget of about rupees 13,000 crore. The government aims to cover 5 lakh families in its first implement first year of the implementation over a span of 5 years. The scheme is expected to reach 30 lakh families. Okay, Apart from the scheme, also has a component for uh, skill enhancement. The scheme includes skilling program that offers a nominal stipend. It also provides financial uh, assistance to the help the artisans to purchase uh, modern tools then aiming to enhance their skills and capability. Okay, these are the important provisions of PM uh, Vishwakarma scheme. Now what are the advantage of the scheme? First major advantage access to credit. See currently traditional artisans face the challenge of access to formal uh, product so credit so vishwakarma scheme is challenged by providing them with affordable loans by assessing the loans artisan can make investment in their trades and improve their livelihood okay so access to credit is the first major advantage then second advantage is affordable credit c pm Vishwakarma scheme provides a credit at a concessional interest rate of 5%. This makes the loan more affordable for artisans. This in turn will help them avoid burden of a high interest debt from informal money uh, money lenders. Okay, So affordable credit is the second major advantage. Then the next advantage is skill development. As I mentioned, the scheme has an approbation of skill development. This provision will enhance the artisan skills and enable them to produce the high quality goods and services. Uh, good goods and adapt to changing market demands okay then the last advantage is that the scheme will help artisans to increase the market for their goods by offering financial assistance to purchase modern tools pm vishwakarma scheme helps artisans to tap into new economic market new markets this in turn broaden their customer base for their products uh, and service okay these are the some of the important advantage of pm vishwakarma scheme now let us see the hurdles in releasing the full potential of pm Vishwakarma scheme. Uh, the first issue is that scheme narrows its focus on credit availability alone. See, the scheme focus on credit availability might only address a symptom of the main issue faced by artisans. The original main issue is uh, economic viability. Artisans faces economic viability for their product and service in the market. If their businesses are economically viable, then the formal credit will automatically reach them. Therefore, the government by providing access to formal credit facilities without addressing the issue of economic viability will only be a short-term solution. Okay. Then second, the issue is risk of debt burden. If the PM Vishwakarma scheme slowly extends a loan without facilitating market expansion, it could lead to a situation where the artisans and their families become 
trapped in the debt uh, without experiencing significant economic improvement okay this is the second important issue then there is a issue of intergener intergenerational impact see the Vish um, pm vishwakarma scheme emphasis on knowledge transfer from one generation to next this could lead to low paying traditional trades and this in turn limit the next generation's opportunities in addition to this uh, this will uh, reinforce societal inequalities particularly if such triads are associated with the caste constraints okay the last issue is implementation complexity the scheme is success depends on effective implementation the implementation of the scheme requires expertise in both the artisanal triads and uh, entrepreneurial skills so only if the government involves the professionals with the necessary knowledge and expertise the scheme will be implemented in a successful manner okay so in a sense the pm vishwakarma scheme has a potential to provide crucial financial assistance and skill development training to traditional artisans but the scheme like success in creating actual path to impact depends on addressing deeper challenges beyond the credit availability the challenge include market access evaluation and economic viability okay that's all regarding this discussion this discussion we saw about the objective of pm vishwakarma scheme then the major uh, provisions of the issues of the vishwakarma scheme and finally we saw the points about the advantage and disadvantage associated with pm vishwakarma scheme so, so this is a new scheme so you may expect a question in both prelims and mains so make a note of each and every points that we discussed with these points in mind let us move on into the next article foreign Uh, take a look at this new article uh, last wednesday two tiger cubs were uh, found dead in the buffer zone of mudumalai tiger so later a post mortem was conducted on the dead cub the post mortem revealed that the stomach of the two cubs were empty so is a possibility that the cubs could uh, be uh, abandoned by their the post uh, post mortem further revealed that there was a sign of injury and poisoning one of the forest officials said the samples have been collected from the dead cubs and it has been sent for a forensic analysis and this is all about the news as mudumalai tiger reserve made news today let us understand some points about mudumalai tiger reserve tiger tigers is located in Uh, nilgiris district of tamil nadu it is situated at the uh, dry junctions of uh, Uh, three states including um, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu. Note that Mudumalai Tiger forms a part of Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve is a first biosphere reserve in India which was declared during 1986. Mudumalai Tiger has a common boundary with Vayanad uh, Wildlife Sanctuary on the west, then Bandipur Tiger on the north, uh, Nilgiri's uh, north division of south and east uh, 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 Godalur Forest Division on Southwest. Now moving on to say about the forest covers of Mudumalai uh, Tiger. See, uh, the 2009 Forest Survey of India says that Mudumalai Tiger Reserve has 47.05 square kilometer of very dense forest. Then to 214.98 km square of moderately dense forest and 56.16 km square of open forest. This is all about the forest cover of tigers. Uh. Now talking about the climate of Mud. Mudumalai Tiger Reserve. Uh, the climate is also experiences cl- cold weather during the month of December. Or the meaning of Jan and the month of January, hot weather is experienced during the month of March and April. Okay, this is all about the climate of this uh, Tiger Reserve. Now, finally, let us see about the flora and fauna of the Mudumalai Tigers. Uh, has a uh, tall grasses which is commonly referred to as elephant grass then a uh, uh, giant variety of bamboos are also grown in the mudumalai tiger reserve apart from this valuable t- timber species like peak teak rosewood are also seen in the mudumalai tiger reserve okay i am talking about the fauna the mudumalai tiger reserve is inhabited by a variety of animals which includes tiger elephant indian go uh, indian goat uh, gaur panther sambar spotted deer barking deer mouse deer lung common langur malabar jane squirrel um, wild dog mongoose jungle cat hyena so then some of the important uh, Uh, bird species like malabar whistling thrush peacock and jungle fowl are also found in mudumalai tiger reserve okay that's all about regarding this discussion 
we saw about the locations of mudmalai tiger reserve so then uh, about the forest cover climate of the tiger reserve and we finally uh, saw some points about the flora and fauna of the mudmalai see this topic is very important for your prelims exam so make note of each and every points uh, that we discussed with this points um, in mind and let us move on into the next news article uh, discussion now take a look at the uh, the small article from the text in context page it says that a study conducted recently by rbi according to the study the risk of stack inflation in india is low with the probability of only 3% this is due to improved financial conditions and unstable domestic fuel prices okay this is all about the news article now in this context let us understand what is stack inflation then about the causes of stack inflation and finally the measures that has been taken to overcome the stack inflation now let us start with the term stack inflation the word stack inflation is a blend of two words uh, namely stagnation and inflation this term is a first used in 1965 by the british politician uh, hi um ian mac macleod uh, uh, in a speech during the time of economic stress in uh, uk uh, see stagflation is actually a economic situation where a country experiences both the high inflation and high unemployment at the same time as well uh, we know uh, inflation refers to the uh, refers to the uh, a general uh, increase in the prices of goods and services and unemployment means condition of no one who is capable of working and actively seeking work but he is unable to find any work normally inflation and unemployment move in opposite directions for example if there is an high inflation unemployment rate starts to decrease but the stack um, inflation is unusual this is because the start position is associated with high inflation and high joblessness okay i hope you understand about stack inflation with this basics now let us see the causes of stack inflation see there are many causes now let us uh, see them one by one first and foremost cause of stack inflation is supply shocks see unexpected disruption in the supply of important resources like oil can cause uh, prices to rise suddenly which in turn leads to uh, inflation at the same time this disruption might harm industries and leads to job losses this symptom causes unemployment okay, okay so okay so uh, supply shocks is one of the cause of stagflation then second main cause is uh, to push um, cost push uh, inflation we see production cost increases the business rises the price to maintain their profit this can spark the inflation if cost increases a lot of businesses might cut production and jobs which leads to unemployment so cost push inflation is one of the reasons for stagflation the final cost is uh, uh, causes demand shortfall see if people are not spending as much due to economic uncertainty it can slow down the businesses so businesses in turn might respond by reducing uh, production and laying off the workers which in turn leads to unemployment so demand shortfall can also be one of the reasons for stagflation okay this is all about this cost causes of stagflation now moving on to see about the measures that can be taken to overcome the stagflation the first measure is making correction in the monetary policy see uh, the central uh, bank like rba rba can reduce inflation by reducing in, increasing the interest rate this in turn makes a uh, see central banks like rba can reduce inflation by increasing the interest rates this makes the borrowing more expensive which in turn can discourage spending and slow down the increase in the prices of goods and secondly uh, correcting the fiscal policy see the government can increase the public spending on infrastructure projects or provide financial assistance to struggling industries this in turn can boost the demand create jobs and reduces unemployment third measure is addressing supply side issues is like improving infrastructure reducing regulations promoting innovation can help reduce the production cost and in turn encourages economic growth this eventually reduces the both inflation and unemployment okay the finally developing long term economic strategies to balance the grow, uh, inflation and unemployment can also help to prevent the stagflation in future okay this is all about the measure that can be taken to overcome stagflation that's all regarding this discussion this discussion we saw about the stagflation we saw about the causes of stagflation finally we saw some points about measures that can be taken to overcome the stagflation now with these points in the mind let us move on into the next news article discussion take a look at the editorial article recently 
the parliament passed the registration of births and deaths amendments bill 2023 so in this context only this editor releases written uh, written the author of this editorial highlights the major issues is with the amendment bill so in our discussion today we will see the major provisions of the bill and issues is with the amendment bill which is highlighted in the editorial now before ge- before getting into the discussion uh, syllabus regarding this discussion is highlighted here you can pass the video and go through its first of first of all uh, know the registration of births and deaths amendment bill 2023 seeks to amend the registration of births and deaths act 1969 note that in nine this 1969 act was enacted to regulate the registration of births and deaths in india now this with this information let us see the important provisions of the amendment bill the first important provision in regarding registration of general of ac 1916 act provides the uh, register general of india act 1969 act uh, 16 uh, 69 act uh, provides for the appointment of a registered uh, general of india see the important function of registration of india uh, register of the india is to direct general direction for registration of births and deaths before here now 2023 amendment bill expands a lot of registration gen- uh, according to the amendment bill the register general of india will have to maintain the national database of registration registered births and deaths okay this is the first change proposed by the amendment bill that's then the second change regarding the registration of births and deaths c 1916 and 16 act specifies a certain persons to report the births and deaths to the register of for example a medical officer in charge of a hospital where a baby is born or a jailer when the birth takes place in the jail they have to report both to the register here 2023 amendment bill has a provision according to the amendment bill in case of birth the specified person shall also provide the other number of parents if available okay this is the second major changes proposed by 2023 amendment bill the third one is regarding connecting databases as we already Mm, 2023 mandates the uh, registration of uh, india to maintain the national database right this database may be available to other authorities for preparing or maintaining other databases like population register electoral roll uh, electoral rolls and ration card and note that sharing of national databases maintained by the registration of india should be approved by central government this one changes proposed by 2023 amendment bill the next one is regarding the use of birth certificate see for people who uh, are born after the bill comes into effect is mandatory that they must use only the birth certificates to provide their data the place of birth for example currently we are using 10th mark sheet as a proof of uh, birth uh, birth right so people who born after the bill comes into effect they do not uh, cannot uh, do that they must only the birth certificate as a proof for the date of birth okay next important provision with the amendment bill is regarding death certificate according to amendment bill for death occurring in hospitals hotels the hospitals must provide a certificate regarding the cause of death to the registrar a copy of a certificate will be provided to the nearest relative whereas if the death occurs in any other places that is other than hospitals or uh, medical institutions the medical practitioner who attend the person shall issue the law certificate and the certificate is issued by medical practitioner must be provided to the registrar okay see here here registrar our officials appointed by the state government for each local area jurisdiction to ensure the maintenance of birth and death database last important provision is regarding an appeal process before seeing the last um, let us see our administration structure for maintaining birth and death in the states see at the state level there is a chief registrar and at the district we have a district registrar and at the local level we have a registrars so if any person is agreed by any action or order of the registrar um, up it can be made to the register uh, district register and if anyone is agreed by the action of a district register apply can be made to the state register here note that appeals must be made to made within 30 days of the registration regarding the appeal must be pro- provided uh, within 90 days these are, are the important provisions of the bill now moving on forward uh, let us see the major issues is with the bill and they are highlighted in the editorial the first issues is regarding the changes made to the role of registry uh, gen- uh, gender uh, uh, rgi that is um, register general of india is 
to the coordination and uh, data may, must maintain a national database in addition to the coordination and unification of the registration system india must also maintain a national database other question is expanded role of register and uh, india in maintaining central database see government's argument is that national database will be made available to authorities dealing with the preparation of databases relating to the population register electorals and other ration card passport driving license property registration and such uh, such as databases at the national level but here are the authors of the opinion that this does not require an amendment expanding the role of registration of india as a birth and death certificates or public documents that can be easily accessed from the respective state government as um, state government so the expanded role of registration of india does not serve any real purpose this is the first issue highlighted by the author secondly the author of the editorial questions the necessity of creating both the national and state uh, database level databases for registered births and deaths the author argues that responsibility of birth and death registration lies with the state government and asking the registration of india to maintain a separate central uh, databases is wasteful exercise this is second issue highlighted by the author then the third issue is the issue of privacy according to the amendment there is a list of reasons for this national data uh, na- database to be shared this list is approved by parliament the future addition to this list will be made by government this is a major privacy concerns as the new addition to the list made by the government might be more dangerous than those listed and approved by parliament for example in future if the government plans to create a list of uh, with the uh, women who have more than two children with the intention of extending family planning services to them it can do so although the plan is well intentioned it is an invasion of privacy and the fourth issue is that uh, the fourth issue is that the amendment has no provision to update the other number of deceased person see one of the main aim of the amendment is to ensure the efficient and transparent delivery of the public service and social benefits without the provision for updating the other number of uh, deceased the aim cannot be attained then there is the issue of conflicting provisions while the amendment prohibits including the causes of death in certificates it also mandates the uh, issue uh, cause a casting of death and certificates to relatives so these two provisions are contradictory to one another and the number one will makes the issue of death certificates very complex before the amendment the process is that medical practitioner who attended to a, a person before the particular person passed away should provide a cause of death certificate along with the uh, death reports and this requirement is mainly for uh, deaths uh, in hospitals it was not necessary for this occurring outside but here are the new amendments made some changes according to the new amendment in case of death occurring in the hospitals the medical uh, practitioner must issue a cause of death certificate and send it to the registrar of uh, births and deaths also a copy of certificate needs to be given to the closest family member for this occurring outside the hospital the medical practitioner who took care of the person during their recent illness must provide the certificate however this approach has some issues as the first issue is that sometimes the medical practitioner might not uh, have a definite reason for person's death and second issue is that the f- the firm used uh, for recording the cause of death follows human uh, world human health organization guidelines so if a person was treated by a uh, 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 use uh, so if the person was treated by ayush that is alternative medicine 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 practitioner the record cause of death might not match international standards so this make it hard to analyze and the last issue is that sometime under a treatment for one condition the patient may die from completely different uh, cause outside a medical facility when the practitioner wasn't available so it is not fair to expect the practitioner to accurately determine the causes of death in case so all these makes the issue of death certificate very complex this is also one of the major issues in the amendment bill next issue is regarding the use of birth certificate as the proof of date and place of birth for many purposes such as school admission issue of passport now other question uh, the necessity of amendment to enable this provision according to the author this can be done by making changes to the relevant rules or executive orders governing them and it does not require the amendment and the last issue is that the amendment makes no changes regarding the certificate for the uh, pre- presumed presumed death see uh, when the disaster or asked 
happens many people could go missing and might have passed away how fun the police stop searching after a while but the family of this missing person need to wait for 7 years to ask for a certificate saying that the person is a consumed death it uh, would have um, presumed death, death allowed for a presumed death certificate when it is likely to that person died in the disaster or accident this would help the families get death certificate sooner but this provision was not included these uh, are the some of the issues as highlighted by the author of the editorial under uh, this uh, discussion uh, discussion is about the major provisions of registration of birth births and deaths amendment bill 2023 then you saw about the issues as associated with the bill now with these uh, points in the mind let us move on into the next article discussion look at this news article here yesterday our president draupadi murmu launched ins uh, vidya agri uh, which is the last frigate in the series of project 17 alpha this ship has been built by the indian navy at the kolkata based uh, go, uh, kolkata based garden and um, ship builders uh, ship uh, ship builders and engineers okay this is all about the news now this discussion we shall see some points about project 17 alpha frigates see the project 17 alpha frigates were launched by indian navy in 2019 this project was launched in uh, to construct a series of stealth guided uh, frigates to indian navy now uh, what is frigate see frigate is a type of a small ship owned by the naval force which can be able to move at a faster speed fragrances are often used to protect the other ships okay frigates weigh between um, 3000 to 5000 tons they are usually equipped with different weapons including guns torpedo missiles and anti craft systems the frigates are employed in maritime security operations like anti piracy patrols and counter narcotics missions weapon systems and sensors of frigates enable them to track and detect the leaked activities on the scene uh, additionally frigates are utilized for the humanitarian operations like disaster relief and uh, search and rescue missions uh, okay these are the about the basics of these frigates now coming back to the project 17 alpha frigates see the frigates under uh, project 17 alpha have been constructed by two companies namely masagon dock sh- um, ship builders and gordon rich ship builders and engineers under project 17 alpha program at total number of 7 ships have been constructed with the four at the masgon dark shield builders and three at garden ridge ship builders and engineers note that the frigates have been named after the hill ranges in india now the name of seven frigates include ins nilgiris ins hima himgiri ins udaygiri ins dunagiri taragiri vidyagiri and mahendragiri note that frigates under the project 17 alpha have been deployed designed in house by indian navy's warship uh, design bureau which is a pioneer organization for all warship warship design activities in india the frigates have been constructed with a specific still design see frigates has a red or absorbent coating so the frigates developed under project 17 alpha are low absorbable which can make its uh, approach undetectable for the enemies apart from this a new technology is also employed in frigates to reduce the infrared signal of the ship this is also one of the steel th- Uh, features okay see aligning with india's commitment to earth manover a bharat um, a substantial submit percentage of equipment to boost the As- atmanirbhar bharat 75 percentage of equipments were from indigenous firms including msme system of frigates under project 17a were obtained from indigenous firms this includes msme is also okay this that's all regarding this discussion this discussion we saw about this what is frigate then we saw about project 17 alpha frigate in detail now with these points in mind let us move on into the next news article discussion look at this news articles here yesterday the national disaster management authority uh, has tested the emergency cell broadcast technology Uh, developed by c dot this technology will allow uh, people to uh, dis- a natural disaster through message which is the t- uh, title emergency alert serve c- c- cvr is currently the testing has done in geo bsnl network and it is said that later the testing will be conducted at pan india level okay this is the crux of the uh, news article given here now it's a context let us see some points about national disaster management authority okay see the national disaster uh, management 
authority which is in short is called ndma is a central government agency it is responsible for formulating the policies plans and guidelines for disaster management in our country uh, the ndma was established in the year of 2005 in accordance with the national disaster management act uh, as it was established based on the parliamentary act the national research management authority as statutory body uh, now coming to the objective of ndma the primary goal of ndma is to create a proactive and holistic approach to disaster management that emphasizes the uh, prevention preparedness and effective responses to disasters apart from this uh, the ndma also aims to minimize the impact of disasters on the lives and livelihoods and the environment by fostering a culture of disaster resilience in india okay this is all about the objectives of ndma now talking about the composition of ndma see under the provisions of ndma the management and act 2005 disaster management authority has been established at three levels this is at the national level state district level and now if you talk about the national level the ndma uh, the national level agency is responsible for the disaster management it has been established under the chairmanship of prime minister apart from this there is also a committee called the national executive committee of Secure- secretaries it has been created to assist the ndma in uh, performance of functions now coming to the disaster management authority at the state level since the state level as uh, state disaster management authority has been created under the chairmanship of uh, chief minister of the state the state disaster management authority has been assisted by a state executive committee okay now uh, finally let us see about the district level disaster management authority at the district level there is a district la- disaster management authority they have been created under the chairmanship of district magistrate or district uh, collector uh, dep- or deputy commissioner okay this is all about the um management composition of disaster management authorities at the various level now moving on to the say about the important functions performed by a national disaster management authority as i already said ndma formulates a policy to guide the disaster preparedness mitigation responses and recovery reports uh, apart from this uh, ndma also performs a variety of functions now let us see the functions one by one first the ndma plays a crucial role in establishing and enhancing the early warning systems for various types of disasters like cyclones floods and earthquakes these systems uh, help in timely communication of alerts and warnings to uh, address population uh, population secondly the ndma focuses on building the capacity of various stakeholders including government agencies uh, local bodies and civil society organization to effectively manage disasters this includes providing training workshops and awareness programs thirdly ndma facilities coordination and integration among the different ministries departments and agencies involved in the disaster management at the national state and district levels apart from this ndma also works towards ensuring adequate resource mobilization both during the and after the disasters to support the relief fund recovery efforts and finally the ndma promotes research and development in the field of disaster management this includes studying disaster trends and this then understanding the vulnerabilities and developing innovative solutions to address the challenge in addition to this ndma also collaborates with the international organizations and foreign governments uh, to exchange the knowledge and expertise best practices in the disaster management okay that's all about regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about ndma and then about the objectives of ndma and uh, then uh, you saw about the composition of authority and finally we saw some points about the functions of national disaster management authority that is ndma now these points in mind let us move on into the next part of the video that is uh, discuss the preliminary practice questions today we are having three questions i will solve two the one will be quiz question to uh, you okay the first question uh, this question is regarding national disaster management authority now look at the first statement it is responsible for the formulating policies relating to disaster management in india actually this statement is correct it is one of the objective of ndma the second uh, statement it is chaired by home minister of india uh, so the uh, ndma is uh, charged Uh, chaired by prime minister not uh, home minister so second statement is incorrect now uh, third statement it is a statutory body actually the statement is correct as we see, see in the discussion ndma was established under the disaster management act of uh, 2005 it was established under the parliamentary act it is a statutory body so third statement is correct here uh, second uh, sta- uh, statement alone is uh, 
second statement alone uh, is incorrect so the correct uh, answer for this question is option b one uh, lead uh, moving to the next second question and the measures are given to uh, how many measures have been taken by government to overcome the stagflation first one adopting expansionary monetary policy by lowering the interest rates second one is implementing the wage and price controls third one is reducing the regulatory barriers and promoting the technological innovation fourth one increases the public spending on infrastructure projects as we saw in the discussion the third and fourth measure can be taken by the government to overcome the stagflation now if you take adapting expansionary monetary policy by lowering interest rates see lowering interest rates through expense stream monetary policy might worsen the inflation instead of uh, mitigating the inflation it can also leads to unintended consequence in the stagflation scenario so also it can be a measure now coming to the implementing wage and price controls see implementing wage and price controls can be counterproductive and distort the market dynamics so it potentially leads to unintended consequences in the stagflation scenario so the first and second won't be a measure to control stack inflation only third and fourth can be done to overcome the stagflation therefore the correct option is option a that is only two the correct option is on a a option the question for you today is post your answers in the uh, comment section try to answer it and answer for the question will be posted in the comment section uh, quiz questions uh, itself you can verify the answers and display here is the main main question go through the questions and write your answers and post it in the comment section so uh, we have come to the end of the video if you found our video useful do like comment share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe uh, to our channel thank you thanks for watching thank uh, thanks for watching uh, have a nice day